check this thing out. So this has not one, but two different CPUs and the heat sinks here are oriented the way they are so that the hot air from one doesn't flow into the other. This board also has 16 RAM sticks on it, which supports an incredible 512 gigs, which actually is incredible considering this thing is from 2012. It's the HP Z820 workstation, which back in its day was a beast of a computer, but it's got some interesting quirks. So I'm gonna have a look at the internals here and I'm also gonna slap Arch Linux on it, benchmark it a bit and see how it really does hold up given the insane specs that it once had. So I actually reassembled it to show you the outside of the case, first of all, with this sick little locking mechanism. Um, you essentially just pull it open and that'll go ahead, open it up. And this is the inside here. This is the CPU and memory fan unit. There's like six fans in this thing. Each of these little green uh, indicators is for a pull tab. Uh, I'm not gonna try to get these all out one handed. This is the power supply up here. I'll show it to you in a second here. Uh, the drive bays are down here and this should actually have a GPU shield, which I do have the component, but since this is a huge GPU and not the original, uh, the GPU shield will not fit back on over this thing. I do have the original or at least one of the original GPUs. This is an NVIDIA Quadro K600, which is the original card to come with this computer. I thought there should have been two of these, but maybe whoever got this computer originally only got a configuration with one. Either way, the other one seems to have been swapped for an RX 580, which is kind of funny considering that is the card in my main PC here. Uh, I don't really need another RX 580, but you know what? I will take that over a second Quadro, honestly. Now, interestingly enough, these RAM sticks, some of them are four gigs and some of them are eight gigs. Uh, and we've got a total of 96 gigs in this configuration, which I guess given that it can support 512 is relatively modest, but um, still a whopping 96 gigs of DDR3 here. Now, these heat sinks are actually staggered. If I hold my finger there, you can see when the CPU fan pulls air out here, the CPU fan is going to sit right about here. When it pulls air out, it's not going to pull it into this other heat sink. The other CPU fan sits here, and then there's four memory fans that sit on top of this memory. This is the CPU and memory fan unit here. There's six total fans, two CPU and four memory. It's actually just got a little pin connector at the top here that plugs right on in there, if you can see at the top. And it just sticks right in and out, super easy. So this is the 1125 watt power supply, which is trivial to get in and out, but once you've got it out, it actually weighs probably five or seven pounds, uh, which foreshadows a little bit the biggest issue with the system. All right, it is time. Fully functional CD drive here, of course. All right, we finally get our processor information here. We've got two of these Intel Xeon CPUs, E5 2620s at two gigahertz each. I did actually go into the BIOS real quick to change the usual settings so I can go ahead and boot into the Arch utility. To actually get into the Arch install medium here, I had to go through and specifically select to run it as a UEFI application because I guess it wasn't doing that by default probably missed a BIOS sitting somewhere, but supposedly we're booting in now. It is time to install Arch, and as such, I dug out my highest quality keyboard. All right, so I just booted up here and I actually wanted to check the temperatures first off and they're looking pretty good. Uh, given that fan unit, I guess I'm not really surprised here, but obviously it's just idling right now. So I'm gonna try some stress testing and see what we're looking at in terms of temperatures and performance. Here's what the Z820 is looking like right about now. We're actually at two and a half gigahertz on the CPUs. Anyways, I'm gonna be doing some benchmarking on it properly tomorrow, so I will see you then though. I guess that will be in about a second for you. Hello, it is tomorrow, we are benchmarking, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what I aim to understand with the results of these benchmarking tests here. 
And the biggest overarching question to me is, is it actually worth buying and running this system in 2025? Now, to be clear, I got this system for free, so it's worth it to me either way, but since the systems generally seem to go for a few hundred bucks on eBay US, um, I guess like 200 to 500 dollars depending on the configuration was the price point I was seeing, is it actually worth running this system? And if so, what is the use case? Because First of all, in the research I've done, I've found out that these are extremely power hungry. Um, the, I actually mentioned a bit with this uh, power supply being such a huge thing. Uh, apparently they do consume quite a bit of energy and the worthwhileness of running these uh, is gonna depend on how much power actually costs where you live, first of all. And second of all, the other big elephant in the room is the specs, despite being crazy for 2012, are not crazy in 2025. Um, DDR3 RAM, first of all, is extremely slow. Uh, second of all, the two Xeons in this thing can probably be outdone by an i5 at this point, right? And there's plenty of other drawbacks. Um, it can't natively support NVMEs, to my knowledge. You would have to do some uh, tinkering with it to get that working. Um, and, you know, plenty of other things that make this not an ideal system in 2025. So would you be better off just building, you know, if you had $500, right? Would you be better off just building a budget system build with current, current specs, right? Or is this thing really going to do it? And my gut feeling here is that it probably depends on your use case. I saw a lot of people are using these things for servers, which um, is interesting given the specs, but it makes sense. Um, the original use case was obviously, you know, stuff like 3D modeling or anything else that's going to end up being super RAM and super RAM intensive and also requiring two different CPUs, right? Um, and apparently some people are still using these computers creatively for uh, whatever, you know, workflow they have. But um, I am very curious to see what the use case would be given the results that I'm going to get here. And I'm going to compare against the uh, open benchmark database. And I'm also actually going to run the same tests on my main PC as well. So you can actually pretty clearly see here which are the 4 gig sticks and which are the 8 gig sticks. If you look, these two are uh, 8 gig and then the 4 gigs are the pure green ones here. All right, hello. It's like 8.30. Uh, this thing has been benchmarking all day long. I've run mainly CPU tests, uh, some RAM related tests. I will put the numbers for everything in the description. I'll also put percentiles as well and the database so that you can actually compare and understand what the results mean if you are curious about this particular system. Um, in terms of what I intend to do with it, uh, I don't think it would really make sense to run it as a server PC. I found a pretty useful video actually showing the power consumption. It was a different configuration of it, but judging based on that video, I don't think it would be worth it to me. And, you know, if I were going to go build a server PC for $500, I wouldn't go get this PC. I wouldn't. Now, I got it for free, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something fun with it just since, like, I have it now and it's a cool system. It really is just a cool system and maybe that's the conclusion I should be coming to. It's just a really cool system to see the inside of and, you know, mess around with a bit. I was wondering, though, if anybody has some suggestions for really weird Linux distros to put on it, like something that I've never heard of before. Um, I've heard of Hannah Montana Linux, so anything weirder than that, uh, let me know, especially something like from the 2012 era or if there's like weird desktop environments or something, uh, just something that's like going to fit the weirdness level of this system. Um, it's not really that weird of a system, I guess. It was pretty normal in 2012, but now it's a very weird system because, you know, you hear like 96 gigs of RAM, right? And that sounds like a lot, but, you know, DDR3, it's very slow, so it's really not that much, and it really doesn't perform that well. Uh, I would say, you know, I wouldn't, like, go replace my current PC here with this system. I definitely wouldn't. Um, that's just the ultimate summary, but if you're curious, you can go look at the numbers. I'll stick everything in the description, and I will link... Uh, I guess a couple other relevant videos, if I can find more videos talking about this uh, system. Um, it's just very interesting that you've got a bunch of different configurations. So uh, do keep in mind, if you're looking at power consumption, um, it's highly going to depend on the exact configuration you have. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and this very unique system. I'll see you next time. Peace!